Hi, hello my friend. It's so very good to see you. If we've not met before, my name is Tracy Fair. I'm one of the online educators with Heartfelt Creations and I'm so excited to be able to craft with you this morning. Uh, so please feel free to drop a comment below. If you are new here, we would love to welcome you and to um, know that you're here among family, our Heartfelt Creations family. If you're someone who tunes in regularly, we'd love to know uh, that you're here as well. Let me know what the weather is like where you are. Today we're having a sunny, beautiful day in Manitoba, Canada. That's where I'm based from. And uh, yeah, so it's just a really, really beautiful day out there. So I wanted to go back to some basics today. And that's what we're going to be doing with our card featuring the Mushroom Cottage Collection today. Going back to basics is a great way if you are stuck in a rut with your crafting to be able to kind of jump out of it. Uh, it's a way to lo lower that anxiety about being stuck in a rut and it's just a great way to recharge that creative energy uh, that you may be lacking for a little bit. Going back to basics is also a great way to create those mailable cards. That's something that I get asked about a lot. Do you make some simpler mailable cards? And yes, that is always an option with our Heartfelt Creations products. And today I wanted to show you some of the reasons I think that Mushroom Cottage is perfect for exactly that reason. Hello, hello, Sue, my friend. It is so great to craft with you again today as well. Leanne, good to see you as well. Janet, my friend, is here as well. She's one of our wonderful design team members, super talented. Estella, good to see you as well. Ivor, fantastic. I'm so glad that you guys are able to join me this morning. So let's pop on over to the work surface and take a peek at what we're going to be working on today. <clears throat> so this is the card we're going to be working on today. You can see it's simple, not too complex. Um, we're going to be working on building a scene with some of the adorable pieces from the Mushroom Cottage. We're going to go over some basics about um, using shapes as apertures to create in your card. Lots of different things today. Again, if you're new to crafting, this is going to be great for you as well as for those of us who are a little bit seasoned. This is going to be a great reminder um, of some useful tips, tricks, hopefully for you as well. So let's start with our card base. Card base is always the starting of our card, right? You want to make sure that you're using a great card stock for your card base. I like to use 110 pound and I also like to use my Heartfelt Creations Deluxe Flower Shaping Paper. It makes a great card base as well. Now another question I often get asked is what do you do with some of these um, pattern papers within these collections that come out? So I wanted to show you Mushroom Cottage has some great um, textures, kind of uh, designs in them that are going to still bring some beautiful interest to your simpler style cards. So you're going to see here, this is something that's a little bit bolder and, and beautiful. You may want to trim this up to make your four and a quarter uh, inch size card. That's what we're working today, an A2 size card. Again, they have these beautiful scrap of pa pages as well with all the different little illustrations. But today I really wanted to concentrate on some of the um, <clears throat> more uh, muted and single toned papers. This would again make a super interesting card base as well. You can see here these little mini mushrooms. They are just so cute if you were wanting to do something a little bit more bold. A beautiful teal with that beautiful patterning in there. Again, you can see this is going to be perfect. When you have scrap pieces left over of your um, kind of single colored car card um, pages from the collection, this is a great way to use them up on your A2 size cards. Again, you could be cutting these portions off into five by sevens or four and a quarter by five. The purple again is beautiful, another gorgeous pattern there. Here you can see that you're going to be having those coordinating tags as well. The green is stunning. We've got some pinks. So again, Mushroom Cottage Collection is just a wonderful collection with so many different bright and bold colors. A beautiful yellow, 
another gorgeous uh, purple that you're going to be able to mix and match these up to create all sorts of different uh, colored cards. It's going to work for masculine, it's going to work for feminine. So here you're going to see I've opted to use a different um, pattern paper just to show you how even if we're going to be recreating the same card it's going to take on its own unique look when you're going to change up your pattern papers as well. So again I've opted to use this kind of paisley uh, kind of colored with purples and blues because that's kind of what we were doing here some pinks. Another important step is always your sentiment. Your sentiment is something you want to think about for sure and um, one of my favorite sets is the Just For You Sentiments. It covers so many different occasions. Hope your day is as special as you are could definitely be used as a birthday sentiment. It's hey, it's your special day. Again, could be used as a birthday. Just for you, let's celebrate for my friend. Sending you a hug is what we're going to be using today. And you can see here that that comes in all of the different uh, decorative fonts. So they're really, really interesting looking they're going to add just that extra pop onto your card as well so again i've gone ahead and i've used the sending you a hug i've stamped that in manganese blue so if you're interested in picking that up and putting that into your cart that's the color that is going to coordinate with all of the blues in the um, mushroom cottage collection so here, creating a focal point, a very simple focal point on your card base. I've opted to use the ovals in this one because I thought the oval really was a nice setting for this taller mushroom. So ovals you can get in the two different sizes. We've got the eyelet oval and basics small and we've got the eyelet oval and basics large. Now between all of these ovals, you're going to see that they nest among each other. So you will never need another size oval if you have both of these sets. I'm going to say my ovals, uh, ovals are covered for when I want to do my creating. Um, that's what I love about this pair. They work so very well together. Today we're going to be using the eyelet oval and basics small. And you can see I've used the second size down. I'm going to grab mine here. So this is what this set would look like. I've used this second size down to go ahead and cut this oval straight into my decorative card piece here. Now what you could do is you could adhere this together and then die cut that out through both pieces and then you would have like a peekaboo window as well. That's another great idea that you could do but for today I wanted to keep it super super simple. So again, these ovals allow you so many different options. You could use them as the smaller ones to create open backgrounds for yourself. Again, so many different ways you could use these ovals. So I wanted my oval to look finished and you'll see here I've gone ahead and I have created an oval frame. Now what I've gone ahead and done, I'm just going to pull out a piece of cardstock here so you can see this really easily. White piece of cardstock, that same oval that die cut our center and I'm going to go ahead and place from the same set that eyelet oval over top and you can see how now when you would tack that down with a low tack tape and run that through your die cutting machine you would end up with a frame again depending on what kind of frame you're wanting to do because it's the eyelet portion we want to create the frame if I had made that opening smaller and wanted to make it a wider frame I would definitely have that option as well going to the other set I could definitely also cut out my oval piece and because this one doesn't nest perfectly I could die cut my oval piece like this and we're going to pretend that there's an oval die cut here right now I could slip this in the center and then I would have a thinner frame. So again, there's so many different ways that you can play around with these ovals to get the different results that you're looking for. So again, just a great way to draw attention to that sentiment and that little uh, scene that we're going to be creating. So here you can see the frame that I've die cut. 
we're just going to go and add that onto the page. Again, with my Dries Clear glue, that's going to make this super quick and easy. Your Dries Clear glue is one of the best glues that you can be working with. It dries clear literally. And if you do get some over the edge, you don't have to worry. It doesn't leave those big, ugly, black and gray smudges that you know we're used to working with traditional glue. So again, that is a great um, product to work with. Make sure you keep that on hand. You don't want to be running out of your dries clear glue. Remember, if you are an Insider member, you can purchase, um, there's no minimum to purchase for having that shipped out to you as well. We will discuss Insider membership in just a little bit. Uh, that's something that I want to make sure you guys are all aware of as well. So here you can see we have our base card ready now. This is where we're going to uh, leave this for now. We're going to work on the next section, which is going to be creating our images, stamping our images. So Heartfelt Creations um, has beautiful etched red rubber stamps. Uh, they stamp beautifully. Today, the portion here that you're going to see from the mushroom collection, I have stamped onto Bristol Smooth cardstock. Because I'm going to be using my um, Zig markers, I wanted it to be a marker paper. Um, if you are wanting to watercolor, our deluxe uh, water, our deluxe uh, paper, shaping paper, sorry, oh, is perfect for um, doing watercoloring. But when it comes to coloring onto um, some paper with markers. I do prefer to use a Bristol Smooth, which you can get at any of your local craft stores like Michael's, Joann's, those sorts of places. Good morning, Irene. It's so good to see you. Joyce, you love that the products are so versatile. I agree. They are just perfect for creating um, over-the-top samples as well as beautiful uh, lesser creations as well, aren't they? So the first thing I want to talk about, because we're going back to basics, is your black ink. Black ink, you want to make sure it's going to be something that does not run. I love to use archival ink in jet black. That's what I have stamped these images in today. Um, it dries very quickly. It's ready for coloring uh, pretty much right off the hop. Zig markers. Zig markers are so fantastic. They can be used as watercolor or as markers as we're going to be using today. Um, again, super easy to work with, really a nice learning curve. We're going to start here with this um, leaf portion here. I'm just going to show you here, that comes from the large mushroom cottage. You're going to see this is the largest mushroom. You've seen this showcased by Emma Lou on some of our previous lives and YouTube videos. We're going to be using uh, this beautiful vine here today as well as the little frog. I don't have him stamped up. We won't have time to color everything today, but I did just want to show you that he is included in there as well. For our mushroom, we're going to be using one from the mini mushroom cottages. These are just so darling. They come in different shapes, different sizes. You're going to be able to create just the cutest mushroom village um, if that's what you're wanting to do. Today, we're going to use this guy as a as a single and of course we have those coordinating dies as well now here you're going to see each of these little mushroom houses you can cut out the windows and the doors I've opted not to do that today to show you that that is an option the last time we created with this collection I showed you how to do this how to um, add those little windows and doors that's a video you can go back for reference but for today I wanted to show you that you don't have to do that it's a great option if we're going to be mailing that we can uh, create something that is a little bit less dimensional as well and then of course we have our mushroom cottage accents we're going to be using the little fence today one of the smaller vines and again this is going to be our little mushroom topper um, a sweet little accent there uh, just so that it looks like the mushroom is growing in and among a few of the little weeds now mushroom cottage collection also has mushroom fairies we won't be using this one today but i did want to show you um, that this is available in this same collection as well the mushroom fairies are absolutely darling uh, they are just super cute a great way to add uh, personal touch to to well wishes as uh, well wishes as well you can nestle them in among the, the mushrooms or your favorite flower from the paper any of our collections 
you're going to see here you can create these wings separately that you can go ahead and add on to give it a little bit of extra dimension. They are beautiful done in vellum and embossed in gold or white. So that takes care of all of the illustrations that we're going to be using today. So let's go ahead and start with this little uh, vine here. I'm going to see if I can pull you guys in a little bit closer with the camera just so you can see a little bit better with the marker what's going to be going on. I've got three different greens here. Uh, the zig markers that we sell might be a little bit different on the website simply because um, uh, I have a larger set than what's available there, but you're going to be able to accomplish this with two or three colors. I'm just going to show you that today. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to go ahead and just add our base color in here. And as you can see, it's quite a light color. And I'm just going to go ahead and because this has such a beautiful brush tip, it's so quick and easy to color up these images. So again, super quick and easy. I am not a very talented colorist, so if I can do this, so can you. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to grab a clear acrylic block. This is just a stamp block. It'll be off frame. I'll just show you what I'm going to do here with it really quickly. I'm going to take a little bit of a darker green and scribble that on here. I know it's hard to see. You can kind of see there's a little bit green there. This lighter green that I just used, I'm going to pull that up off the center and just start adding some of this little bit of darker green. You don't have to worry too much about your colors mixing because these are um, water-based markers. So the darker green that I'm putting onto this lighter green brush tip is going to actually just come off as it's colored off and it's going to return back to the regular color. Now I really like this. You can see that that is already two um, different co colors in there, two different tones. I'm going to go for a third. I'm going to use kind of a yellowish green just to go and add some whimsy in there because come on it's mushroom cottage it's gotta have some bright and vibrant character in there and you can see how that's already bringing those leaves to life it's just giving it a little bit of a different look it's just gonna pop behind the rest of our pieces and there you can see that's as easily finished as that now we're going to move on to the bottom here. I'm going to color this one here for you. Again, we're going to stick with that same green tone that we started with and we're going to do the exact same thing. And you can see how that has returned back to its normal color. And we're gonna get the vines here as well. Because when we die cut this, that's all going to be included in, in that. I'm going to go back here to my dark green and just grab some of that and start adding that in. I still have some of that left over on my block. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go for that bright green and add a pop of that there as well. So it's going to match that vine that we just did up top there as well. I'm going to add a little bit more on my block here because I am running out. There, now we can see that a little bit better again. There you can see how quick and easy that was. Next, we're going to go ahead with some pinks. I've got two pinks here that I'm going to use. I'm going to start with my lightest pink first, and I'm just going to go ahead and add that in there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to scribble some of my darker pink onto my block and just start hitting the centers kind of where I want it a little bit darker. A little bit down the trumpet there of this floral, a little bit into the center. And you can see how quickly and easily those flowers come together as well. Next, we're going to quickly go ahead and tackle our mushroom. Let's try and get him into frame here. Do we have most of him? 
There, that might be a little bit better. So for our mushroom here, what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color in all of my yellow pieces first. So I made all of these guys yellow. The window, we're going to say the lights are on. And there as well. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we're going to grab our two different blues. So again, I've got a light blue, a very light blue, and a darker blue. I'm just going to go in and put my light blue down all over the cap here. Again, it's a very light, light blue, and I here I forgot one of my polka dots. So again, our your base coat is always going to be your lightest color and then you're going to go in with your darker color and add to that. So next what we're going to do is we're going to uh, scribble some blue here onto our block and we're going to go ahead and take that and we're just going to start laying that down and bringing that out. And you can see how that starts fading as we slowly add and start I like to do it in circular motions, just slowly going to start bringing that out because you can see how that color starts wearing off and you're going to be left with that lighter color there where you're wanting it in the center. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're just going to keep pushing this where we want it to be a little bit darker, maybe a tiny bit up here to meet it at the top. And you can see how easily this is done. You can keep coloring and you can see how that will just eventually fade out. And that's how you're going to kind of color that here um, very quickly and easily. We're going to do the same thing in here. I'm going to take my light blue. We're back to that light color you can see. We're going to go ahead and do the doors as well. And we're going to go back and we're going to grab some of that dark and just do a little bit of accenting in here on the shutters with that. And the same thing here, we're just going to go ahead and pull that darker color through. And you can see how beautifully that's going to blend from you going from dark into a more light tone. If you wanted to keep doing this, you could go back in and keep adding darker and keep building. You can see how you can keep building on that. So again, you're the designer, you're the artist, that is totally up to you. But again, it's not a super complex way of coloring. I really, really enjoy my Zig markers. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to grab two different greens, again, a light green and a dark green, and we're going to finish off the rest of the mushroom. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab my light green. And I'm just going to go through and add that base coat. And you can see I'm not worried about it being too perfect. If there's some white uh, left over in there, that's okay as well. I did just notice here, I want to make sure these guys are blue capped at the windows as well. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our dark green. And we're going to pull that through now as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling that here where we kind of know it will be a little bit darker under the mushroom cap. Just like that. And you can see how that has now become two-tone. And then we're going to just go ahead and add some of that in here as well and pull some of that through. Just going to keep pulling that down here through the mushroom. 
in the round. We're going to do a little bit darker here at the base, just like that. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, just a little bit. And you can see how that really finishes off our mushroom very nicely. So again, super quick and easy way to color. Again, I am not a professional colorist. If I can do it, so can you. Oh, we did miss our window up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish that off just like that. Next, we would be using our coordinating dies to go ahead and cut this. So again, I will just show you here with this mushroom. Our dies are made to specifically line up with the image, so you're going to have a very nice cut. All you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and lay this onto your coordinate, coordinating images. You can see here, I would be able to cut all four of these pieces at one time, the way I've laid them out on my paper, so that we're going through the uh, die cutting machine with one pass. So again, I would put all of my dies in place with some low tack tape, run that through my die cutting machine, and I would end up with some of these gorgeous, gorgeous die cuts that you'll see here in just a second. So this is what we would be landing up with. So this is what we're going to be using to create our little scene today. And the little fence. Isn't that cute? That's going to create just a super cute um, scene for us. So let's build the scene and then we're going to talk about flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my card base here. And I'm going to just zoom out here so we can get back into focus a little bit better for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to start setting up our scene. So I know I kind of want the fence as a little background piece here like this. And I want my mushroom kind of to it up near the something like this near the um, sentiment now the sentiment before I stamp the sentiment I usually have my die cut pieces cut I know we're doing it a little bit backwards here because I'm trying to show you the process from start to finish but what I'm going to say is really before you stamp your sentiment, if you're creating a little scene on your card, have all of your pieces cut first because you want to make sure that your sentiment is uh, where you want it. If I would have placed this um, any further this way, we would have had this problem, right? Like we would have had ending you a hug because we would have covered up a portion of our sentiment. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're lining up your pieces and kind of then placing that stamp where you want that on the sentiment. Um, a stamping platform is definitely going to help you like that, like the, the Misty or something like that. So I think this looks about right. So we're going to go ahead and add our fence. Again, I'm just using our dry clear glue today with that fine metal tip. It allows you to control that uh, glue beautifully. It gets where you want it and you're not overusing as well. So we're just going to go ahead and pop this in place here. Now, I wanted this card to have a little bit of dimension. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and added some foam tape, dimensional foam tape on the back. So this is kind of where I know I want this uh, to land up. But before I pop this into place, I wanted to make sure that I'm going to have room for everything else that I want. So again, this is going to be on the top of the mushroom. So this is going to sit something like this. Now you're going to notice that it pops off of the mushroom as well. Again, I've added some uh, foam tape to the back of that as well. But I also have these little vines that we want to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and shape this one real quickly. This is the smaller vine with the flowers. I'm just going to grab my shaping mat here and my tool, my deluxe shaping tool. And I'm just going to go in here, I'm gonna use the big end actually, and I'm just gonna go ahead and roll that over here, give it some dimension. I'm going to go ahead and pop some of that back. 
simply because I want to be able to have some glue points to adhere that to as well. So that's what we're going to do. This is the next piece we're going to go ahead and add on. I want that kind of to be coming out like this. So something like that. So it's going to frame the bottom of our uh, little design there. Now, something else that I want to share with you is when you're creating a simpler design, sometimes the pieces are just, um, I don't want to say too large, but you're going to be able to use them the way you want them by cutting them apart. So I really like to cut my die cut pieces apart at times. I just find that it gives you um, more versatility with them. So I'm going to cut apart these two large ones and I'm going to keep this one here as one and set that apart. We're going to use that a little bit later. But what I really want to do with this guy is I want to kind of make it look like it's a little bit more full back here. So you can see how that's going to go ahead and add to that cluster there. And that's going to now give you a little bit more dimension as well. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and add this guy on next, this little piece that we've snipped. I'm not going to shape him. I kind of want him to be a little bit off in the background like that. We'll put this back here for reference just to make sure we're on the right track. And then we're going to have this kind of come out from the fence. Now remember, this one has shaped, so I'm only going to put glue on a couple of different spots because I want to keep that shaping and that dimension popping up off the card. So we're just going to go ahead and slip that on there like that. And you can see how this portion here is going to uh, still go ahead and pop up off your card. Now going back here, we're going to make sure that this is all still working well. This still looks like our little mushroom house here. But we have this extra bit of um, leaves that we want to use. Now I'm going to cut this one off because you can clearly see that that has been snipped. And then I think what we're going to do is we are going to kind of add that up and around there. And we'll see what that looks like when we add... Yep, so that looks about right. So we're going to just go ahead and add this. I'm going to quickly pop that piece out from the die cut. And then we are just going to go ahead and have this kind of pop up back here. Now we're ready to go ahead and add our mushroom. There you can see how that now is ready to nestle beautifully beside our sentiment. And this one here, we're not going to shape, we're going to leave it as is as well. And we're just going to have this growing off the top of the mushroom. So now you can see how you have several different types of dimension here. You have these leaves that are here in the back that look like they're growing from behind the mushroom. You've got these here on the front and they've also been lifted up off of the mushroom which itself is lifted off the page as well. So we do still have a little bit of dimension on this card but this is still totally totally mailable. That's a question we get asked a lot is, can you mail uh, more simple cards? Definitely. This is something that's going to work for mailing. And then we have our cute little frog here as well. I have gone ahead and put two layers of foam tape on him because I want him to pop up off of the card as well because he's the one sending a hug, right? There we go. So we could stop here, but... It wouldn't be heartfelt creations if we didn't add a few flowers, right? So for this, I opted to use the lilacs. So we have the lush lilac. This is what it looks like. So you have a stamped portion that you can create a dimensional lilac on, and you have just the separate petals as well as some decorative accents. Today we're going to be using just the petals as these tiny little diminutive flowers that are perfect for uh, mushroom cottage collection. It's one of my favorites to use with that. 
So again, my coordinating dies to cut all of this out so we don't have to fussy cut. And of course we have that 3D Lush Lilac Shaping Mold. It's going to do all of the hard work for us. I'm going to show you how that works in just a second as well. So the first thing we would do is we would stamp out our lilacs. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've stamped them out in Ranger Archival Cactus Flower. It's a really, really pretty purple that I love to work with. I'm just going to go ahead and add a light shading over each of these. I'm not too worried about having them super dark. We are going to color up the tips once they would be die cut. So that's going to add some extra um, oomph to them as well. You can see I'm using my stack and store dauber just in a circular motion. It colors up these little petals really super quickly and easily. If you are new to the flower shaping process, this is a great flower for you to start with as well. It's very easy to assemble. If you are looking for an accent flower, I would have to say lilac is one that is um, one that I use quite a bit as well. So of course what we would do is we would use our coordinating die, same as I showed you before with the mushroom. And we would then come up with these gorgeous little petal die cuts, these gorgeous little lilacs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with the same color that I've already stamped. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop some color onto the tips. I know it's really hard to see because these are so small. Um, just onto the tips of the flowers. But here I'm going to hold two of these together and hopefully you'll be able to see the difference. You can see how one now kind of pops. This one pops because it has the tips done. It looks a little bit more finished than this one. It's going to pop off the card a little bit nicer. So next thing we have is our shaping mold. I've got that here, the Lush Lilac Shaping Mold. I have my lilacs in here shaped already, so we're going to pop these guys out into a corner and deal with them in just a little bit. But these are the ones that we just die cut. The flat ones. So all we're going to do is we're going to pop them in upside down into the coordinating cavities and you can see how many um, you can do at one time here. Now you can layer up to three layers of this in here. I have used our deluxe flower shaping paper. That was something I wanted to make sure to mention as well. When I'm making my flowers I've gone ahead and used a different paper than the paper we were uh, using to color on the mushroom uh, elements. So again, this is the deluxe flower shaping paper. It is engineered to keep your color and and also to take that little bit of water that we need for the flower shaping process. So all I would do here now is I'd go ahead and just spray this lightly with some spits of water. You don't want to be too heavy handed. If I were putting more layers in, I do spritz between each layer. I'm just going to go ahead and clamp that together. I use my Big Shot machine to uh, go ahead and shape these so I would have a clear plate on top, a clear plate on bottom. I would run that through my die cutting machine and then I'm left with these adorable little petals that have been shaped. You can see how they are already shaped for you. We're just going to finish them quickly by hand. I'm just going to grab my shaping tool and all I'm going to do is give them a gentle pop in the center. And you can see how that's going to get them to just lift their petals and they are then ready for uh, putting onto our card. So we're going to grab our card back here and we're going to grab our dries clear. And we're just going to start adding these into a few places. So I'm going to put one here with the frog. You can put it behind him, beside him. You could add some more trailing here, but for today, I think one is just right there. I'm going to add one here onto the little mushroom. We often get caught up in thinking we have to have the flowers where the flowers are in our design that we've colored. You don't have to worry about that. This petal looks like it's maybe falling or randomly growing onto the mushroom on its own. It has a mind of its own. So again, it doesn't have to always be totally um, logical, right? It's We're creating a little mushroom fairyland. So I say the flowers can be falling off if that's what they so desire. We're going to do one off the page there like that. And we're going to do one more 
kind of up and behind here. So again, super cute, and you can see how that has added just a brightness and a pop of color to our card. We're going to quickly finish off our florals. We are going to grab some frills. I am using the You Had Me at Yellow. It's a really, really nice bright yellow that I'm going to use for the center of these flowers. Just going to grab my tray here because if you've worked with prills, you know that they pop all over the place. We're just going to do these three here. Just so you can see how that's going to come together. Just like that. And we'll just pop them off. And you can see how that has really changed the look of that flower now. Isn't that pretty? So petite and so cute, but it really sets off those blue polka dot or those yellow polka dots on that blue mushroom cap so beautifully. So we're just going to pop these guys back into their container. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to explore some glitter. Today I'm going to be using our Dries Clear uh, adhesive with our ultra fine transparent glitter in crystal so it's a very beautiful uh, see-through kind of glitter one of my favorites I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing kind of on these lines where you see the leaves have some illustration I'm going to go ahead and add some very small dots to the flower I'm also going to go in here and add just some small dots onto my polka dots. And you can see that that is enough to just add that little bit of curious uh, glistening and interest to this little card. So there you can see how that when that's going to dry clear, that is going to give you just a beautiful little shimmer and shine. I'll see if we can see it on the original card here. There you can see how it's just that beautiful sparkle hay as I move it around. Just a beautiful, beautiful sparkle. So here you can see we've created two of the same cards, but they have very different look. I would say one could be masculine and one could be feminine. And you would have two... Um, similar designs ready for you in your stash, in your crafty stash, uh, ready for when you're wanting to send an any occasion card to someone through the mail. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. I wanted to really take you back to the basics and remind you of some simple tips and tricks that you can use when you're stuck in a rut or you're in a hurry, whether you're an advanced crafter or you're new to your crafting adventures. Be sure to check our Insider Membership information. We're going to pop that into the link for you below as well. Insider Membership with Heartfelt Creations gives you so many fantastic perks. From 20% off your order to free shipping in the U.S. and 20% discount for our international friends. And again, you have access, uh, early access to product. You have uh, free shipping in the U.S. as mentioned. And again, you have access to all of our online classes valued at $29.99 for the duration of your membership. And there are so many to choose from. There's a new one happening this afternoon, I believe, with the Mushroom Cottage Collection. So I hope you've been able to uh, join in on that one as well. So again, thank you so much, my friend, for taking time to go back to the basics with me. I can't wait to craft with you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.